Hey guys, great to have you here again today. In this video, I'm gonna answer one of the questions I get a lot of times, and that's how should we warm up when we're about to go play around the golf. So everybody comes out and hits a few balls at the driving range. What should I be working on? What should I focus on while I'm doing this? Everybody's gonna be a little bit different depending on what piece of technique maybe you're working on right now, but the overall format is gonna be quite a bit the same. Or if you're going out to play a tournament, I'm gonna show you a great way to take your range game out to the course so that you can shoot some better scores. A lot of times we'll hit it great on the range, it'll fall apart on the course and we can't figure out why. I'm gonna show you a great tip for that. So I've got my flight scope out today and I'm gonna actually track some of these shots. But as I start out, all I'm gonna do is just hit some nice easy wedge shots. And really, this is because you're usually tight as you're getting up to the course, get, you know, coming to the course. I wanna just have a few swings where I go back and through and I'm really not worrying about much else other than just getting some good solid contact and loosening up a little bit. I'm not really thinking about a lot while I'm doing this. I'm just trying to get a nice rhythm or a flow to my golf swing. So that one didn't pick up. Let's try another one here. See if this next one will pick up. Uh, you know, these aren't full swings. I'm starting out maybe 30 or 40 yard shots of the sand wedge, and then I'm gonna build it up more to my full swing later. So that one's a little farther, probably 55 yards, something like that. Now that one was 70 yards, so a little farther. So I'm just gonna gradually build that up, starting out 40, 50 yards and going farther from there. Now one thing, kind of a tip here that I recommend trying not to do, a lot of times I'll see players go out to the driving range, they'll grab two or three clubs like this and they'll start to swing them to get loosened up. Now, that'll get my muscles going, get my blood flowing, that'll get me kind of loosened up. The problem is when I go from three club heads down to one, now I've lost a lot of feel for this golf club. This feels so light now that I can't really feel the face. I feel like I may not be able to make as good a contact as I'm doing that. So I recommend, you know, if anything, if that happens, you really want to warm up like that, make a few swings where you turn the club the other way where it's really light, make a few swings that way, and then that'll kind of balance it back out to where now you can feel the club head again. Because when I go from heavy to light, very difficult to feel. So from there now, I'm just going to gradually go farther and farther. I'm going to swing a little harder and eventually I'm gonna to get to where I'm making swings where my full distance, so 100, 110 yards, whatever distance your sandwich goes will be completely fine. So that one, 96 yards, and I'd go a few more. So once I go from the wedges, those don't, I don't really have much of a target for my first five or six swings of the wedge. As I go a little harder, and I'm getting closer to my full distances, then I want to start to pick out targets. I don't want to just hit into open space. Now, one of the big things here, I got a six iron. One of the big things I'll work on once I've started to make full swings, I'll work through the bag. Maybe I'll go from sand wedge to nine iron, eight iron, six iron, work through it that way. But I'm gonna hit the six iron mostly here. One of the things I'm gonna make sure is that I'm making a good full turn. We talk a lot about the power turn in the top speed golf system. I wanna get those shoulders going, those hips going. And then as I come on through, I wanna get a good full turn coming through the target that way. So that'll be one of the first things I really focus on in the beginning of the session. I wanna make sure I'm making a good full range of motion. There you go, so that one really got a full turn back, full turn through. I'll try to work on several different types of shots here in a second, but they're all gonna be turning over mostly right to left today because I got a really big wind. So on that one, making a good full turn, you're gonna see my club head speed is 94 and a half. Because of the wind out there, the distances are gonna show up shorter. So I'm not really worried about how far I'm hitting this, just that I'm making a good swing and getting a, a good full swing speed on it. There you go. So once I've hit a few shots and I feel pretty comfortable with my turn, I'm getting some good swing speed, I really wanna pay attention to my ball flight. And every day, no matter how advanced you get, whether you're on the PGA Tour, or no matter if you're a scratch golfer, or a 20 handicap golfer, Every day, you're gonna hit the ball a little bit different. So maybe I'm hitting that nice draw the last five or 10 days, and everything's just really, really solid, getting that great ball flight. And I come out today and I'm hitting a big slice. You know what happens, sometimes you just get really out of whack. So I wanna pay attention to, number one, what is my easiest ball flight to hit on this particular day? So if it's naturally a fade coming for me today, I know that today I'm probably gonna favor hitting fades out on the course. If it wants to turn over a little bit more right to left, then I'm probably gonna fa favor a draw out on the course. But I'm just gonna pay attention to my natural ball flight and see what happens. So let's go ahead and try to hit one and just see what kind of flight we get on this one. 
There we go. So today we got a pretty strong wind right to left and that one really started to turn over right to left, rode the wind. So I know if I do that several times in a row that I'm favoring that side. Now what I want to do before I go out to the course is I want to try to straighten that out a little bit. I want to hit the ball to where I feel like I'm hitting a little bit more of a fade to try to get to zeroed out. So today I'm favoring a draw, but I'm going to try to hit some that are a little bit of fades and then zeroed out. And in that way, my ball dispersion won't be very bad. So every day is going to be a little bit different and I may have to feel something a little bit different. On this particular day, I'm going to, especially with the right to left wind on this shot, let's pretend there's no wind, but I'm going to feel like I really hit a bit of a cut until I can get that ball to turn over left to right. It may take me two swings. It may take me 10 swings. But I'm just going to keep on doing that until I can get one or two. So that one there barely started to turn to the right. The wind may have pushed it back slightly left. Got a lot of wind once we get up there. We're blocked by the trees here, but there's tons of wind going this way. So I'm going to really feel like I keep going a little bit more. So you'll notice on that one, you can see my flight scope numbers. Club head speed was 96. I got a good turn. My path was 1.9 left, meaning that my swinging a little bit to the left. And that's exactly what I want to get that ball to turn over to the right. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. Because I was hooking too much earlier, I'm really gonna make sure that I can get a couple good fades in there. And then I'm gonna to try to straighten it out. So one more good fade, I'm gonna to try to swing even more to the left on this one. There we go, so I overdid that one a little bit. And my path is gonna be quite a bit more to the left, I think. All right, so let's see what the path is. Oh, I didn't read it on that one, but you can see it's a pronounced left to right type shot. So that's really key. And I think a lot of golfers skip this. They say, well, when I get better at golf or when my handicap gets lower, then I'll start trying to work shots. We want to be practicing this on a daily basis. So I started out hitting overdrawing the ball a little bit. Then I got a few fades in there. Now let's try to really straighten this out to get ready for the round. And the reason I always want to straighten that out and hit shots that don't curve very much is because whenever I have big curving shots, it's very easy to, to get off track. If I have a very inside swing and my path is going way out here and I'm hitting big draws or big hooks, if I have the face a little open, it's gonna go way to the right. Or if I close the face a little too much, it's gonna go way to the left. There's just too much margin, not enough margin for error. It can go all over the place. Same thing with a fade. If I'm hitting 20 and 30 yard slices, it's very easy to pull one or to overcut one. I mean, you just have this big, huge area that you're hitting your, your shots into. If I'm swinging pretty straight, then I'm not gonna have very much discrepancy between my left and right shots. And that's just because of the club path is moving squarely through the ball. So once I've kind of tested out both extremes, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to try to hit some pretty straight shots. So let's see how straight I can get this one to go. There we go, that one was really nice. That one didn't hardly move at all. It may turn a little to the left just due to the wind but that was almost a dead straight ball flight. And we'll see that the, if it'll read, so my path was 1.3 to the right, so a very, very small amount to the right, and that was a good straight shot. So in the beginning, I got loosened up, then I worked on my turn, make sure I got my speed, and then from there, I'm working on ball flight. I'm trying to hit both fades and draws and then bring it back into the middle. So I've done that now. As a beginning golfer, you may not be able to do that, or, or an intermediate golfer, you may not be able to get all the way to where you want it to be, but if you keep working on it, it'll come. So once I've done that, now I'm gonna take out the driver and I'm gonna work on playing a couple of crucial holes that are gonna be in the round. Let me grab a tee. And what I'm gonna do here, and this is one of the reasons that people's games don't always tr travel to the course. I wanna be actually in my mind playing one of the, the critical holes that I have coming up. So let's imagine it's number one I'm gonna visualize that in my mind here. Let's say it's a dog leg left, and I'm gonna to try to play it down the left side of the fairway. I wanna do the same thing here, and I wanna go through my entire pre-shot routine. So I'm standing behind the ball, I'm visualizing the shot that I wanna hit, I'm stepping into it, you know, making a couple little swings, if that's your, whatever your routine is, and then I'm gonna play it right over the left corner to cut the corner. Oh, I got a bad ball there. That one took off really funny. Let me hit one more. So I go through my routine again. Ball must have been cracked, it acted crazy. But I'm gonna visualize exactly what I wanna have happen. 
step up. I'm playing the shot in my mind like a movie. I'm gonna take it right over the corner. There we go, that one just started just over the left edge and was pretty straight. So start over the left side, started to cut back and almost dead straight. And we'll see that my club head speed is okay, 114. A lot of wind today, so the distances are gonna be pretty short. But I'm able to play that kind of shot. Now imagine I didn't hit a good shot there. I wanna keep on hitting that in my mind over and over again. So I'm stepping back, going through my full routine. Once I've hit a couple of good solid ones there, I get a lot of confidence. I know that I can go to that first hole and recreate what I've already done. Once I've done that, I may go to a critical hole out on the course. Let's imagine there's another hole that's a, you know, a dog leg right, and I need to hit a cut shot. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and set up here and play out that cut shot in my mind and then make it happen. There we go, so hit that one really well. That would've cut around a little bit of left to right. So you're playing the actual holes that you're gonna be doing out on the course before you ever step out there. You're on the driving range, playing those in your mind and hitting the shots. And if you're hitting the shots on the range, that gives you that much more confidence when you make it out to the hole. If you don't hit very good shots, it gives you a little bit more time to practice, to get your swing down so that you can hit those that you want to. So go through that pre-shot routine. First, we're starting out by just getting our distance control, getting some feel, making a good full turn. We're working on our shot shapes. And then to finalize it, we're gonna play a few holes that are gonna be on the course that we're about to play. If you go through that routine, I promise you guys, you'll feel a lot more confident on the first tee. All right guys, hope y'all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. We all want lots of lag in our golf swing. It's so crucial to have tons of lag to be able to get that high club head speed and to be able to drive it past your friends. I'm gonna play a preview from one of my most important golf lag videos. If you're on a desktop device, you can go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. If you're on a phone or a tablet, you go ahead and click the iCard and you're gonna get instant access to that video. Plus, you're gonna get instant access to five videos from our top speed golf system. Good luck to you guys. Go out there and rip the ball. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see and in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we wanna do is throughout the swing, I wanna have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not gonna set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, you look at Tiger Woods, all these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, we can increase this wrist set and we're really only gonna max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be. 